Uh, my Lord, the children of Scotland should be able to uh, thrive and look forward to a positive future. Long COVID, the long-term illness caused by COVID-19, has blighted that prospect for too many. For too many, long COVID presents a seemingly insurmountable obstacle to an engaged, fulfilling and productive life. The inquiry has embarked upon its listening project, Let's Be Heard. In an adult world, the voice of children is too often ignored, disregarded or belittled. I ask all of us in this room today to pause and think back. Did we hear the voice of children in the decision making on masking, school mitigations, examinations or immunisation? Or is our recollection that children were simply told how it was going to be? For reasons I find unfathomable, we have been precluded by the inquiry from allowing the voice of a child to be heard in these opening statements. Bearing in mind that we appear to have the technology to do so, and if we don't, that of itself must be a matter of concern. And bearing in mind also that the inquiry has already claimed the privilege as the masters of its own instance to play its video in its opening its statements. And perhaps more vexing of all, but my learned friend Mr Gale said yesterday that the inquiry in its Let's Be Heard outreach wanted to hear from children so adults are not speaking on their behalf, to be denied the opportunity to present our opening remarks in the manner we would wish risks the perception of a tin ear on the part of the inquiry as it takes its first steps. We can only hope this error of judgment, for frankly, that is what it is, will not be repeated. So it falls to me, my lord, to read the world of a child. Many months ago, we all became ill with coronavirus, and very soon we became very ill. Some of us became seriously ill and had to stay in hospital. Our symptoms looked a bit different to the ones that grown-ups seemed to get, so our parents didn't always know what was wrong with us straight away. Coronavirus doesn't only affect children like us, many of our parents got ill too. So we've had to stay at home and try to look after each other, but many of us got worse and needed extra help from doctors. Our parents were often scared. It seems like a long time ago that we felt well and could do some of the fun things we like to do. We're still at home and we're still unwell. Many of us are still in bed lots of the time. It can be boring, annoying, frustrating and tiring and we miss our friends. We miss feeling well. One day a group of doctors and grown-ups who are ill just like us called our really long illness long COVID. Long COVID means that you're still ill after many months and you never know how you feel when you wake up or try to play favourite games. One day you might feel okay and the next you might feel terrible again. Sometimes you might feel okay and terrible on the same day. It's very confusing. Having long COVID is weird because it didn't exist last year. We're the first people to have lots of different things go wrong with us. The child goes on, we didn't feel like this before we got coronavirus. We felt like you. Now we all have long COVID and nobody knows what to do. Our parents are working together to get us some help and that's why we're telling you our story. We want to feel better again. And when we ask when we will feel better, nobody can tell us when that might be. It's making us sad. Well, a recitation of common symptoms, my lord, exhaustion, cognitive impairment and chronic pain for long COVID truly fails to convey the true lived reality of this disabling and devastating illness. The inquiry has been offered and we trust will hear from those with that lived experience of children and young persons housebound, bedbound and isolated, distraught, humiliated and suicidal, of professional scepticism, indifference and inaction in response, of the struggle to gain recognition respect and action. Long COVID kids 
is a grassroots organisation formed by individuals who have borne the burden of that lived experience and who have become disillusioned and frustrated by the slow, inadequate and frankly reprehensible response by government, national and local, to the long-term illness caused by COVID-19. They are the citizens who continue to suffer from the effects of the disease, who either are or are looked after uh, those who are at greater risk of morbidity upon reinfection with COVID-19. There are over 250 families supported by long COVID kids in Scotland, with a child suffering from long-term symptoms having contracted COVID. And there are believed to be around 10,000 children and adolescents suffering from long COVID in Scotland. They are entitled to answers to many questions, but above all, they're entitled to know whether their suffering and their sacrifices and their fate was avoidable. So for that purpose, amongst others, this inquiry must engage in a robust, probing and challenging and unrelenting critical analysis of what those entrusted with their care in government and our health service did and failed to do to recognise and act upon the risks of long COVID. This Scottish inquiry proceeds alongside that undertaken by Baroness Hallett. It's chosen to set its own course, one that is different from that taken by the UK inquiry, although the final destinations may not be too far apart. For reasons that are understandable, but not necessarily optimal, uh, this inquiry has chosen to defer its consideration of decision-making until experiences and recollections have been recorded. However, when the time comes for analysis, the expectation must be that the inquiry will look at the peculiar nature of the Scottish response, that of the Scottish Government, <coughs> Scottish local authorities, and Scottish health boards. The possibility of long-term post-viral illness was, as I said yesterday, well known before the pandemic. The question that has been asked of Baroness Hallett is that if long COVID was foreseeable, why was it not foreseen? In this inquiry, I ask, in addition, why was it not foreseen by our Scottish elected representatives and our Scottish health and education officials exercising their responsibilities for the care, well-being and education of the children and young people of Scotland. One of the recurring themes the inquiry will hear from those with a lived experience of long COVID is the struggle for recognition of the illness and recognition of the need for specific diagnostics, focused treatment and sympathetic support for those who continue to suffer, a professional scepticism that manifests itself in abject indifference to need. As we've heard, Baroness Hallett has already been referred to the then Prime Minister Boris Johnson's apparent scrawled response to the Department of Health and Social Care's call for recognition and support for people with long COVID. Bollocks. And to his apparent admission in his witness statement to the United Kingdom inquiry that he did not, at least initially, believe that long COVID truly existed. What we ask is for this inquiry to ascertain whether our First Minister, our Scottish Government, our health boards and local authorities were any better? Did they challenge? Did they gainsay? Did they follow the science? Or were they indifferent? Were they acquiescent? Were they supine in challenging such attitudes? Did they recognise the risks and consequences and the needs of individuals? And most importantly, did they act? And if they didn't, why not? Are they guilty of the same attitude to long COVID that found its expression in the crude terms that I've referred to. So as we embark upon our evidential hearings, I pose not a comprehensive list, but some questions in the light of the lived experience of many who question the adequacy of the preparation and the response to the pandemic. Standing along delayed recognition of long COVID and the struggle for recognition, was any planning undertaken by the Scottish Government, Scottish local authorities or NHS Scotland, with particular regard to the effect of a pandemic on the health and as we'll consider later, education of the children of Scotland? If so, did it include consideration of the effects of long-term illness for children? If not, why not? Did the Scottish Government and others distinctly and proportionately weigh the effect of the pandemic on children and young persons in formulating its initial public health response to the pandemic? Again, if not, why not? Did the Scottish Government and others review, appraise and reappraise and revise its response in the light of the lived experience of long COVID in children 
and in the light of the emerging evidence of harm in research? If not, why not? Did decision makers in the Scottish Government and NHS Scotland adequately warn the public of the risk of developing long COVID and take the disease into account in public health communications? Once again, if not, why not? And if they did, to what extent was that in response to patient advocacy rather than action initiated from a following of the science? Concerns as to long-term consequences of COVID-19 were appearing in social media in March of 2020. Public Health England's first published advice came in September 2020. Was there a distinctly Scottish approach? Those who have struggled against professional indifference and scepticism to highlight the issue of long COVID in children deserves, at the very least, an answer to these questions. For too many, their experience has been of little or no accessible designated paediatric diagnostic testing, treatment, or support for children and young persons suffering long COVID. So did NHS Scotland and individual health boards recognise and respond to the distinct needs of children and young persons with long COVID as knowledge expanded? And again, my mantra, if not, why not? Bearing in mind that the risk of long COVID remains for all of us, including the potentially crippling employment and economic consequences of personal disability and that, and that which might flow from having to care for a child with long COVID, did the Scottish Government and NHS Scotland ensure that in the light of what was known by the end of 2020, that the long COVID will be the subject of appropriate data collection and modelling to enhance our knowledge of the disease and the methods of treatment of long-term sequelae? Our children, on whom the burden of responding to a future pandemic will fall, deserve assurance that the learning need has been acknowledged and acted upon. Scottish children with long COVID, that is to say those who continue to suffer, deserve to have some accountability if it is not. And beyond information gathering, did the Scottish Government and NHS Scotland ensure that in the light of what was known by the end of 2022, that NHS Scotland was adequately informed, funded and resourced to provide the specialist help and support that this cohort of sufferers continues to need? If not, why not? So as we embark upon the work of the inquiry, I again, as I did yesterday, exhort the chair never to lose sight of a specific goal. This inquiry must conclude with pollutedly clear findings of fact as to how children and young persons' interests and rights as regard long-term illness were considered, weighed and acted upon, if at all, both in pre-pandemic planning and then in response to the pandemic. In his opening remarks, Council for the Scottish Government read reference to its four harms dashboard and to equality issues being included in the assessment made of each of the four harms. Well, we wait to see what that actually means in reality. It will, my Lord, only be with an understanding of what was considered and what was ignored, what was weighed and what was discounted, and what was done and what was not done, the lessons can be learnt for the future. So again, there needs to be rigour in ensuring the inquiry gives careful and discreet attention to this cohort of affected persons. We look forward to the inquiry producing background research directed to long COVID in children and young persons in like manner as it has already produced background research papers for other areas. Again, there needs to be understanding of the practical consequences of long-term COVID-related illness and the steps taken to avoid and mitigate the same. And there needs to be an understanding that long COVID is an ongoing and escalating threat to Scotland's public health. It is debilitating, life-altering, and can be life-threatening. And so there needs to be accountability. Accountability for failures, oversight, and indifference. The stated aim of the inquiry, and your Lordship's point of reference at all times, is to establish the facts of the strategic response to the pandemic in Scotland and to ensure that lessons are learnt from that response. Only on hard facts will the inquiry be in a position to ensure that those who have failed the children and young people of Scotland will learn lessons for the future. We should be able to look at the report of the inquiry and fairly conclude whether their suffering was avoidable. Although the inquiry is constrained by its terms of reference to consider matters other than planning, 
over only the period of 2020 to 2022, it is in the area of long COVID that it is likely to have its greatest immediate impact. Long COVID is still prevalent. Children are still contracting it, and with every infection, a number will suffer the extreme effects of this awful and debilitating condition. The inquiry has the ability not only to reduce the impact of future pandemics, but also impact Scottish children now and in the immediate future. We need to ask ourselves whose child, grandchild, nephew or niece might this inquiry save from the iniquities of this devastating illness? Well, Lord, I, I can't speak for all of the core participants in this inquiry. There are many able advocates in this room, and you will no doubt have the benefit of the best of their advocacy, as you will, I have no doubt, from the inquiry team. However, if I might venture, I suspect there is one common desire for many, if not all of us. This inquiry will hear evidence that at time will be harrowing. It will hear evidence that at times will be shocking. It may hear evidence that will frankly be scandalous. But through it all, there will be a desire for the truth to be established. The task ahead is daunting and it will be long. My learned friend, Mr. Gale, in his opening statement yesterday, made an idiomatic reference to as you like it. May I, in similar vein, be so forward to venture a personal and hopefully enduring point of reference for your Lordship as he begins his task. It's a line from the Merchant of Venice. But at the length, truth will be out. My Lord.